Good morning and happy 420 from my bedroom in Peru. Um, I thought it'd be interesting to actually go outside and kind of show you guys some of the different psychedelic plants we have in the garden in honor of yesterday being uh, the birthday of LSD and today being uh, 420. So, uh, yeah, thought I'd show you guys the garden. So here is my little balcony. We got the river right there, just out in front. Got a beautiful mountain right here. And uh, yeah, let's go check it out. You know, before we go to the garden, I'll actually show you guys uh, the maloka or the temple where we do uh, our ayahuasca ceremonies. It's just right here behind this magical door. All these little beds here are, uh, well, that's where we lay during ceremony. Um, we do ceremony at night. This is like the traditional way to do ayahuasca. You do ayahuasca at night. Here is where the shamans sit. The shamans that I live with are from uh, deep in the jungle, uh, from a community uh, called Vencedor. And they are, uh, they come from a Shabibo tradition. So they still speak Shabibo and um, they come from a long lineage of uh, shamanic families. And it's really deeply ingrained into their, into their culture, into who they are. So this is the altar. We got a little San Pedro cactus here. Uh, it's called Wachuma in Quechua, in the native language here in the mountains of Peru. This is a mescaline containing cactus. And uh, it's really beautiful. We have one outside, I'll show you in a little bit. Um, this is our Wachuma stick. We were doing a Wachuma ceremony and went for a walk and I found this stick. So now every time we do Wachuma, we uh, involve this stick. <laughs> um, yeah, I got some cool crystals, picture of Baba Ramdas in front of Krishna, um, we got Ganesh, we got Ama, Mother Maria, we got this really cool picture of uh, Android Jones made, we got some really cool instruments, you guys might have seen this like in different YouTube videos about ayahuasca. Some shamans use this during ceremony. I've never seen them use it here, but. Oh, I think the cat's on the roof. We got this amazing uh, wood carving that someone made. It's really cool. Yeah, I got tons of tons of fun instruments. Got this thing. I got this uh, this giant drum. And um, the shabibos, which is what the the language that uh, one of the shamans here speaks. He speaks Spanish and shabibo. And this is the shabibo art. So this comes from the people in his community. And uh, so this right here represents the ayahuasca leaves. So ayahuasca, for those of you guys that don't know, ayahuasca is um, two, is a combination of uh, two different plants. It's the bark of the ayahuasca vine. I think wasca actually means vine. And aya, I think means death or like flipped around. So it's like the, the vine of the souls, or the vine of, the, of death is what, is what it means. And I think that's Quechua. But uh, yeah, this represents the, the, the leaves that are added into the brew. And uh, there's, we have some, uh, a brew in the, in the kitchen. I'll sh show you in a minute. But this represents the leaves, the DMT containing leaves, which is the visionary aspect. And uh, here's... Some serpents, serpent visions on ayahuasca are very common and considered like a, a healing and considered a blessing if you experience that. And uh, people all over the world, despite their cultural influence or anything like that, still, for some reason, for some <laughs> mystical reason, have uh, serpent visions. 
people get eaten by serpents. One time I was puking. Ayahuasca makes you puke. They consider it a, a purge, so it's like a cleansing. Um, and uh, I was puking out these neon snakes and bugs and crazy visionary medicine and very, very, very intense, very profound and beautiful and I consider it a gateway to the spirit world. Um, but yeah, this is the temple. I love hanging out in here, just playing music and just, uh, just sort of chilling. Um, but let's go move out into the garden, check out the garden. Some type of weird animal over there making a noise. Got some beautiful little flowers. It's crazy that nature just makes this stuff. The geometry is amazing. You can see the Fibonacci spiral right here in the middle of it. You can also see it here too. Crazy. Math. The, the secret code to our reality. Up here, we, uh, it's like a normal vegetable garden. Uh, I'm not totally sure what they're growing. I'm, I'm not really my, my department. Um, here, I'll give you a cool view of the river. Look at this uh, cool little hangout spot right here. I love trees that have like these dangling things. Got some birds flying around. So there, there's here's an interesting little story. There was a a bunch of stuff going crazy here at the at the center, and um, oh, so for those of you guys who don't know, this is an ayahuasca center called Arcana, and uh, I've been living here for a few months. I've actually been in Peru since January, and uh, yeah, my friend Jose he owns this center, and uh, it's really a really incredible place of healing. It's like a you know like a like a church in a way but like a, a real church where you can you know like i said you get a, a direct access to the spirit world and and to god so um but there was a yeah there was a bunch of crazy stuff that was happening and um the shaman said that there was an anaconda living here in the in the river and the anaconda was like sort of pissed off that we were doing ceremony and like we make a lot of noise sometimes that like we play our instruments like big drums and uh, apparently it was making the anaconda mad. So it was like sending, you know, bad energy to us. And it was making like water pipes break. And, uh, you know, just like a bunch of crazy stuff was happening. And, uh, yeah, I don't know if that stuff's real. But it's, uh, it's interesting, the world of the shamans and the, the world of magic they live in. Um, so they had to call in a bunch of shamans and they came here to do ceremony to tame the uh, the anaconda from from uh, you know keep to keep it from ruining this place and uh, I guess they tamed the anaconda and now it protects the center you see this little crazy structure right here this is called a temascal and uh, it comes from the North American uh, natives. It's a sweat lodge, essentially. Here, I'll show you. And here we have our normal fire pit. But this is the sweat lodge here. And uh, during the sweat lodge, we, we cover this up with blankets or with uh, you know stuff to cover it. And we add hot rocks into the center there. Hey, Shanti! And, uh, you know, maybe like 20 people can probably probably fit in here and um, it gets real intense and it's a really deep cleansing. What do you want, Shanti? What do you want, Shanti? What do you want? Okay. Oh yeah, I'll show you this cool plant over here. This is one of the most interesting plants we have in the garden. So this is a magic plant right here. This is called, here they call it Toei. Uh, in the States we call it Angel's Trumpet. In Mexico, I think they call it Flor Pondio. It's a Brugsmansia plant. Uh, it comes from the family of the Scopolamine, Scopolamine, Scopolamine family. Got a bunch of little tiny gnats living inside of it. 
but this is a very very uh intense psychedelic i think they consider it a delirium and it can make you go crazy properly if you don't know what you're doing um and i think if my memory is right they don't know uh what the origin species of uh this plant is i think these are hybrid so that that sort of implies that it's been a part of human use for thousands of years and uh people have been using it here in south america for ceremony for you know since basically prehistory and uh you can sleep with it in your pillowcase and it'll give you intense dreams sometimes the shamans will smoke its leaves so i think every part of this plant can be used in ceremony um, i think you can even take the seeds and grind the seeds up and uh, you can blow it in people's face this is like what brujos and witches and stuff use and it'll make you give you amnesia compliant amnesia too so it's like i could blow it in your face and uh be like hey go empty your bank account and you'll empty your bank account and give me all your money and have no recollection of doing that but uh the shamans you know they use it for for good and they use it for uh for divine visions and prophecies and um, i've even seen them strap the flower to their forehead during ayahuasca ceremonies and apparently that helps them recover uh, lost items or you know all kinds of crazy different magical stuff but yeah Oh, there's tons of bugs living inside the flowers. Toei. Yeah, beautiful plant. Very interesting and mystical and uh, can be deadly if you don't know how to use it properly. You can even make it into a tea. Um, one of the shamans here actually dieted this plant as a way to uh, make friends with it and learn its powers. That's like kind of what the shamans do here. They diet plants and... Uh, through dieting the plant long enough, you can learn it. Yeah, it's a different world here, you know? This is like a Hogwarts or a fairy tale compared to where I grew up. But um, with my experience using some of these plants, I've not used this one, but with my experience using different psychedelic or psychoactive plants, uh, <sighs> seems real. Um, but yeah, doe. Beautiful plant. Needs to be respected. Um, I'll show you the kitchen where we were brewing ayahuasca for our ceremony a few nights ago. So this is ayahuasca. Ugh, stinks. This is Adriana. <laughs> She's cooking something. Here's Shanti, the one that was on the roof. Shanti! <laughs> yeah, so this is the ayahuasca we drank like two nights ago. And uh, had crazy experiences on that. This thing almost looks like a cauldron. You know? We were brewing it, that's all I could think about, how this was like some witchy earth potion. And it is, essentially. Free holidays. Ooh. Okay, I'll go check out some other stuff out here. I love these flowers. I don't know what they are, but every time I see them, I'm, I get like <laughs> I get overwhelmed with with beauty. This is that's one of the this is one of the maestros Eligio. <laughs> so that little thing back there, that bell tent, that's where we kind of we hang out and play music, or you know, just kind of come together as a little family because we're all trapped here during this Corona stuff. 
Oh, this is one of my favorite plants over here. I don't know what it is, some kind of cactus, but the colors are beautiful. It doesn't even look real. Check this out. Isn't that incredible? Like the, the pinks and the blues and the green. It's like almost trippy looking at it, like, you know, just sober. Beautiful. I got Shanti's following me around. Okay, now I want to show you uh, Shanti, the Wachuma that we got. I love this cactus here too. So this, this guy here, see this tall cactus here? That is Wachuma or San Pedro, that's the one I showed you that's in the temple. Here we can see it. So this is uh, the native word for it here in the mountains is Wachuma. And when the Spanish came here, they called it San Pedro. And San Pedro, if I'm right, someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but San Pedro is the, the saint who holds the key to heaven's gate. So when the Spanish came here and came in contact with Wachuma, they had such profound experiences as if they were coming in contact with the gates of heaven, you know, and uh, they believe that this is the key of hidden, the key to heaven was hidden inside of the cactus from San Pedro. So that's why they decided to call it that, and that's the name it goes by now all around the, all around the world for the most part. Yeah, this is actually one of the oldest used psychedelics that we know of. Um, we find carvings that are really old of, you know, depicting shamans using it in ceremony. And, uh, yeah, it's actually, I don't think it is a psychedelic. It's called the, it's a considered an empathogen which is similar to what MDMA is is uh, considered. But uh, it, it can give you visions if you take enough of it. And uh, I would consider it a psychedelic actually, but um, the techni technically it's not, I guess. But um, it's very easy um, to, to, to navigate through. It's not as intense as any of the other psychedelics I've tried. And uh, it's a really beautiful experience. You feel very connected to earth, colors, become more saturated you feel really connected to everything and you just kind of want to like rub the grass when you're on it and just roll around and you know you sort of recognize that you're a part of this earth and not really separate from it you know because we do like kind of go through our lives feeling a bit separate from uh, from everything and uh, this is a great reminder that this place this planet is our home and we are a part of this you know like my feet are connected to this ground, even though I can move around. And, uh, yeah, it's a beautiful reminder. Wachuma. And this is the biggest Wachuma I've ever seen. It's got to be like 12 or 13, 14 feet high. Like, look how high that thing is. Jeez, and they grow really easy, too. And you can buy them in the States, and, uh, yeah, they're just, they're beautiful in general just to have. Uh, oh, I'll show you this over here. This is uh, our little art exhibit. This is the shamans, where the shamans live. This is our dingho's room. Uh, I'd love for you guys to meet him, because he's got all kinds of crazy stories of like getting swallowed by an anaconda and having to cut his way out, or marrying mermaids. <laughs> he's a really cool guy. He's got tons of interesting stories. But um, here is the uh, our little art. Uh, exhibit this is where people hang out and kind of paint stuff or express themselves uh, this is mine right here this is a little uh, coyote that I drew um, looks like someone added some white here I didn't do this white this was actually supposed to be a sky I was gonna add another mountain right here behind it yeah, it looks like someone came over here and added their own little flavor to it Got a big piece of blue paint stuck in my foot. I like this one. And here's another one of those flowers that I am in love with. It feels so cool, it doesn't even feel like a flower. And here we got a little cross. 
here's our little makeshift goal for when we play soccer. See a little rock right there, another rock right there. So this is where, you know, most, we spend most of our day just kind of chilling in here. Um, the girls make these things. They're really cool, actually. Another little altar. Again, this is some more Shibibo art. They make such beautiful art. It looks like a half cat, <laughs> half serpent. This is Agua de Florida. This is considered like a, uh, another purification tool during ceremony. And it's kind of like a, sort of like a cologne of different flowers, I think. And it smells good and helps keep you grounded. This thing's cool too, the serpent. This is actually made out of a cactus. I don't totally understand how they did it, but it's cool. Ah, so, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the tour of the Psychedelic Garden and uh, the tour of, of Arcana. And, uh, yeah, this is my home currently. So, uh, yeah, much love, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, gracias por ver este video. See you guys next time. Did you know that Lord Shiva listened to high tech?